JavaScript provides you with three keywords for creating variables, let, const, and var. We've already covered the difference between let and const in the previous video, and we have also understood the similarity in terms of their scope in the last video. If you don't understand the scope of let and const, make sure you watch that video first or else this video is not going to make too much sense. I've left a link to it in the description box below. Once you're done, you can come back to this one. Okay, so in the last video, we learned that let and const variables are block scoped. But what about var variables? So let's try and test out what happens with var variables in a block. So I've created a block here and inside of this block, I've created a var variable var x equals to two. I've tried to print x after creating it. It works as expected. Outside of this block, I've again done console.log x. Now, if this variable x was created using let and const, we know that this would result in a reference error saying that x is not defined. But if you try to run this code with a var variable, you'll be surprised to know that JavaScript does not throw any error in this case and it will print 2. It will print the value of x as assigned in the block above it. So from this, we know that var variables are not block scoped then what is the scope of var variables? So the scope of var variables is the function scope if it's defined inside of a function or if there's no function, then the scope of var variables is the global scope or the module scope, depending on the JavaScript program, if it's in a script mode or a module mode. Since all of our examples have been in the script mode, we'll be talking about the global scope instead of the module scope. In this example, the var x variable will not be scoped to the block in which it was created. Var variables are not block scoped. So this means that you will be able to access this var variable outside of this block scope as well. And since this piece of code is not contained inside of any function, the var variable here will be scoped in the global scope. So that's why you will be able to access x outside of the block as well. So let's try this var variable inside of a function scope. So in the previous example, I will make this block as a part of the function body. So I will do function print x and then try to run this function. And then after that, when I try to do console.log x, now this results in an error. This is because var variables are function scope or if it's not a part of any function, it is in the global scope. Let's take a look at another example here. So I've again created a function and then I've created a block inside of this function and inside of the block I've done var x equals to two and then I've print x inside of this block. It works perfectly. And then outside of this block, I've tried to do console.log x again. So we know that var variables are not block scoped. So th this statement also runs perfectly. But when I try to print x outside of this function, this results in an error. Okay, so now we know that var variables are function scoped and that the block does not have any effect on the var variable. But what would happen if you try to access a var variable before it is declared? Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the case of let and const variables. If you try to access let and const variables within the same scope, but before they were declared, it leads to a temporal dead zone error. However, if you try to do the same with a var variable, you'll notice that instead of showing an error, it simply just prints undefined. Well, this is due to something known as hoisting. In the case of var variables, the type of hoisting that we talk about is declaration hoisting. What this means is that only the declaration of the var variable will be hoisted. This means that the interpreter will behave as if it has moved the declaration of var x to the beginning of the function scope in this example, but the actual initialization happens at the original point in the code. So you can think that this code behaves like this code when it's executed. So in this case, the declaration of variable x will behave like this. It will be hoisted to the top of its respective scope, which is the function scope in this case. So you can think of it like this, that var x was declared at the beginning of the test function. And since you know that all the variables that have not been initialized yet are assigned the value undefined. That's why when you try to do console.log x before it is initialized, it prints undefined. And then on the next line, it's finally initialized. 
note that the actual declarations are not moved by the interpreter it's just for understanding and illustration purposes this concept or this behavior is commonly referred to as hoisting in javascript but the term hoisting itself is not defined anywhere in the ecmascript specification so the spec defines a group of declarations as hoistable declaration but it does not mention the term hoisting and in hoistable declarations it covers these four things and not var declarations we're not going to cover function hoisting in this video and it's possible that sometimes you may come across people trying to outsmart you saying that hoisting does not happen in javascript or it's not a thing in javascript some people might debate the term itself but as long as you understand the behavior of how var variables behave and what the scope of these variables are like then it's fine just wanted to put like a warning out there now since hoisting is not a term that is defined within ecmascript that's why sometimes people may also say that let and const variables are also hoisted in a way but they enter into something known as a temporal dead zone whereas var variables do not enter this temporal dead zone sometimes people may say var variables are also hoisted but the type of hoisting in var variables is different than the type of hoisting in let and const variables again as long as you understand what's happening how their scopes actually behave in code it's fine i'm not here to debate about the terminology we're just trying to understand what is happening in javascript now let's talk about redeclaring Variations. Unlike let and const variables, var variables do not trigger any error if you redeclare a variable with the same name within the same scope. It's again due to declaration hoisting. The declaration of these two duplicate variables will be hoisted towards the top of the respective scope and both of these lines of code will behave as if they are just initializing or reinitializing a value. However, this works for only duplicate var variables. You cannot do something like this, let x and then var x. You cannot redeclare a variable with var if it has already been declared with the let const import or the class keywords so a var variable can redeclare itself so you can do var y and var y but you cannot do let x and var x also you cannot do this let x and then create a new block scope and then do var x because var variables are not scoped to the block that's why this example is equivalent to both of them being declared in the same scope which is the global scope in this case so they are essentially in the same scope even though you have added these curly braces however you could do this var x outside of this block scope and then let inside of this block scope well this is because now these curly braces do create a new scope for this x variable this let variable here now let's try one more thing here what if you do something like this var x equals to 10 and then var x now in this case what would happen let's try to print the value of x again hoisting is at play here you can think of it like this that the declaration was made at the top and the first actual declaration just acts like initialization and the second declaration doesn't really have any effect because you're not really assigning any value at this point Due to this hoisting nature of var variables, it's recommended that when you're writing modern JavaScript, always use let and const variables instead of var variables. Before we end this video, again, I have a question for you. What will be the output of this code? So I have console.log x, then I have two nested blocks. So the first block begins where I do var x equals to two. Then I create a nested block inside of it. Then I've created let x equals to five. Outside of this block, I've done console.log x. And then we exit the first block. What will be the output in this case? If you want to find the answers to this one, you can check out my Instagram. I'll see you in the next video.